Hi, yes, Governor. I'm David Elfin. I cover transportation uh, all, of, all across the country, all 50 states, and very curious, uh, kind of, make, I've lost track of the 10 proposals. Uh, first question is the fuel tax increase that you proposed back in the spring, is that still operative, the 8.95 cents to the 16.95 cents? Yes, it's, it's absolutely still uh, on the table. Um, and we've had, uh, I've had some of the uh, industry um, leaders who will be paying the most for it uh, come to me and say, why is that not passing? He said, I'm, 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 I'm going to pay it. I mean, but it's got to, it's got to pass me to pay it. So it's an unusual situation, but it's absolutely still on the table. Uh, and it would still uh, keep us on the lower end of the national average on, on, uh, uh, on, on, on fuel taxes. You would actually still be the lowest until New Jersey passes their proposed increase. I'm sorry, once more? My, my follow-up question is, is, is sir, uh, sort of what your, the people on the ground there have been asking. Uh, where do you think we go from here at this point? I mean, is, this, is there any chance of this being resolved uh, this, this summer? Well, I, I, I describe myself as the ultimate optimist, and I am. But even with that uh, being, being uh, that, I think it's uh, become much more challenging the closer we get to, uh, you know, primary uh, dates in, in August and in a, in a general election in November. Um, uh, you know, if there's reason to, to – if someone comes to me and says, hey, we want, to, we want to come back and resolve this, man, I would call a special session – in a minute uh, to do that, but uh, someone has to come to me and say, we're, we're ready to do this now. And uh, so I think barring that, I, I think we'll need to wait till after the election. Thank you. Next question, operator. Our next question comes from the line of Liz Rain with KTVA, please go ahead. Governor, you consistently said that you're not going to play the blame game. Um, and in fact, in an interview last month, you told us uh, you thought there was a fair amount of finger pointing going on and said, quote, I don't do that. I just don't because I've never found that to be productive. But yesterday you took to social media and uh, said that um, AK Ledge games continue, that the, indicating that the legislature is playing games. Do you think that post was productive? You know, I don't know if it's production or not, but we did have uh, three hearings scheduled at the same time in three different cities, and that was that was a little challenging for, for having com uh, uh, Commissioner Hoffbeck to be in three different places at the same time. So that was uh, that was challenging to uh, to uh, attempt to do that. I do have another question as well. Um, you mentioned that you think that average Alaskans understand the need for your plan, and, and the reason that I'm calling in is um, because, like other media. Um, my station has had trouble shouldering the cost at so many special sessions in Juneau. Uh, do you think that the outcome of this special session would have been different had it been held in Anchorage closer to a larger group of media and a larger um, public? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, the, I, I sat down with both the, uh, the Speaker and the President of the Senate to talk about location for the special session. Uh, the, the House was uh, in, indicating their desire was, um, was Juneau. The Senate was a close call. They, they kind of had a preference for Anchorage. Uh, more folks in the Senate, I mean, I'm sorry, in the House and the Senate, so we, we uh, tilted towards, uh, uh, towards Juneau. The other piece of it was the, of course, gavel to gavel is, is, a, is an important part of it. That's available here in Juneau. This is the capital city. So I don't know the outcome would have been different if it had been held someplace else. Um, Liz, I, I really don't. I guess one, that's one of the things that we'll, we'll, we'll never know how that, would, uh, how that would play out. Next question, operator. Hearing none, Nat. Our next question comes from the line of Matt Bookson. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Matt, are you there? Are you in? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're here now. Okay, thank you. So the no action plan that you put forward, the details in there are, you know, that's when everything's depleted, that's a real kind of fall off the cliff scenario. Um, might you, you know, proposing this year's budget, start to implement some of those stuff earlier? I mean, can you make some of those, would this budget, I guess, reflect um, something earlier than later, I guess, in a way to attempt to try to extend something the best you can as far as you're talking about next year or, the, or this year um the, the the budget you have to put out in you know december this last december we did put it i mean you, oh, going forward so the, the upcoming budget. <clears throat> i see okay yeah, going forward might the might those budgets um reflect some piece of the no action plan 
Oh, it certainly will. It has to. I mean, we don't have a choice on that. So uh, it will make, um, it will have some, in, definitely the budget going forward will, will, you'll recognize that in the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, operator. Our next question comes from the line of Steve McDonald with KTUU Channel 2. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Governor. Um, if I heard you right, uh, you said that uh, there was speculation that the uh, special session would adjourn tomorrow, this uh, on Friday. What does that do for the possibility of a veto override? And are you monitoring those efforts, and, and where do you feel they're at at this point? You know, we we don't we we monitor from the outside looking in, so we don't. Uh, uh, certainly, that has been brought up. There's been a lot of discussion about that. I'm actually quite honestly a little disappointed that's been the focus of of uh, overrides versus solving the problem. Because uh, the vetoes again is is uh, uh, we're not going to solve the problem with the, the vetoes or the veto override. So. Um, I know I don't know. I've heard that um, you know, Friday is the fifth day, so if there's going to be an override, it has to be on that day, as I understand it. So that's why we sort of have said uh, we've heard that if, if if they do, they do. If they don't, they'll probably uh, uh, they may gavel out. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Steve. Ne next uh, call operator. Next question. We have a follow-up question from the line of Liz Rains with KTVA. Please go ahead. Hi, Governor. Just wanted to follow up on my question earlier about um, the post yesterday. I just wanted to clarify, what do you expect to accomplish with um, posts like those, um, you know, about AK legislative games? Yeah, we are trying to um, uh, make sure that, um, um, you know, we get our message out. That's our whole, whole purpose, and uh, uh, we want to make sure that legislators are, are coming to the table. Thank you. Nat? Um, Matt Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Uh, I, I was just curious, what do you what do you see as your role and involvement is going to be in the upcoming election and election season? You know, that's a <clears throat> that's a question that um, I'll I'll probably take as the final question. Um, that's something that's uh, you know, there's been a lot of speculation about what I will do, and uh, um, you know, I um, Alaska needs uh, there will be some changes. I mean, some people are not running again, and so. I'm I'm nonpartisan. I'm not I'm not representing a party. Um, I represent a state, and uh, and if there's an appropriate role for me, uh, I'll I'll look seriously at that because I we need to have we need to have um, folks in Juneau that are going to make some tough decisions and make some decisions based upon uh, uh, the longevity of this of this state. And so I may I certainly uh, anticipate that that uh, that will come up, and I will take seriously the opportunity. You know, right now, I don't know if I could help anybody, quite honestly, with, you know, when you, when you do what you do. Um, so I'm not sure that would be a, a blessing or a curse. Uh, but uh, so I will, um, um, I'll, I'll look at that. I'm certainly not ruling that out, the possibility. So thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. Thanks to those online. And um, I think we have some follow-up handouts or some of the, the t and those that don't have um, David Teal's uh, report, let us know. We will give that to you today as you leave. Uh, it's worth a read. It's, it's, uh, it's very well done. And it's, um, it's, uh, he worked for the legislature. He has for a long, long time. It's pretty, it's pretty concise as far as the situation we're in. So thanks very much.